The Lord be with you. Grace and peace to each and all. Beverly and I are sequestered here at St. James Place, but we're not alone. We have friends all around us. We have that great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. And most important, we have the presence of the Spirit of the living Christ, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. We invite you to join us in worship now and hear now a call to worship taken from Psalm 27, the Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I will remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. Wait. For the Lord.
Yes. Hello, everyone. I was asked by Reverend Chisholm to speak with you all today in regard to how we're doing, uh, the Crupola family, in regard to this quarantine. We are doing fine. Uh, I'm sitting here in our, our study. Anderson has been working with homeschool activities all day. Fortunately, his school has provided um, activities online. Uh, for every subject, so it's been challenging. They, they're they up to snuff. Um, and I have been trying to work from home uh, on my computer, doing work that I do um, for an attorney here in town. So it's been a, a good day. And of course, James is at the office currently. He's at the clinic at Baton Rouge Clinic, and he is taking care of a lot of folks trying to snuff out this virus and get us all back on track. So if you will join me, um, I, will, I would like to read the Psalm 23 to you, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I remember when I was a kid, my mom would go up to church on a day other than a Sunday. She might have been working on a project and just want to stop in and talk to the minister. And I'd be set free to roam around the church building. I was okay in all the rooms, the Sunday school rooms, the fellowship hall. But the one room that I didn't like to go into was the sanctuary. I was used to being in the sanctuary on Sunday morning when it was full of light and life and music and voices. During the week when the sanctuary was empty, quiet, dark, uh, to walk in there I could, I could feel the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Any sound, if the roof, roof creaked, I was set running out of the room as quickly as I could. I have to confess, it's now Sunday morning as we're watching this, and this sanctuary is sitting empty and quiet. So many sanctuaries, not only here in the United States, but around the world are sitting quiet and dark. Where will the people go to encounter God's holy presence? Should we be unnerved? by this. As I was reflecting on the situation this past week with the coronavirus and so many closures, a verse came to my mind. It's a, just a, a passing event that comes from the Good Friday story. When Jesus is dying upon the cross, it's recorded that the temple veil, the curtain that enclosed the holiest of all places, the temple veil, the temple curtain was torn from top to bottom, as if God reached down with his hands, tore open that curtain himself. Usually the way I heard that interpreted was, well, that means that was God's invitation for everybody to come in curtain no longer separated us, that, that we were free to come into the holy presence of God. I thought, well, 
wouldn't it be nice to be able to go into the Holy of Holies there in the temple of Jerusalem? But I don't think that's what that scripture means. I finally figured out what it means. That yes, indeed, God reached down and he tore open that curtain. Rather than God's holy presence being open for people to come in and find it, it meant that God's holy presence was now loose and in the world. The scriptures that record that event of the tearing of the temple curtain even say other strange and miraculous events happened right as Jesus was dying the holy God was loose in the world, bringing life even to the dead. As you're sitting at home, you might be a little unnerved as well. You might be used to coming to, to this sanctuary or some sanctuary and finding God's presence. And for this past week, we've known that that just wasn't going to happen today. But know this, when God's holy presence went into the world, it continued. It continued to move outwards. As the gospel spread, God's presence was seen time and again. And now this morning, in your own homes, I invite you to open yourself to God's holy presence coming to transform and to renew you. This past week, I talked with my daughter about ways that we could build a sacred place within our own home during this time that we can't come to the sanctuary or we can't come to the, to the youth building where children's worship and wonder is held invited her to help us make some safe, sacred space in our own home. I want to share with you what she did. Oh, hi guys. Today I'm going to show you around my Bible study place. And don't laugh. It's legit. So first, we have the worship and wonder sign. Worship is because we're worshiping God in this whole space, whatever you call it. And then we have wonder, wondering what is happening in the world. What is happening in the Bible study? That's my basic worship. Thing. Oh, also, I will be reading a scripture to here, and then I'll, it's a surprise tomorrow. So I have my mom's Bible. It's my favorite Bible because it's pink. Purple's my favorite color. I mean blue. Um, but I also like pink. Then I have. This little nativity set to remind me how Jesus was born and what happened then. And then I have this candle. So let's go tomorrow because I have to go to sleep. Oh, hey. Now, since the surprise was today, woo! Everybody clap. The surprise is I am going to read a scripture from the Bible to you and light the candle. So first I'm going to read my favorite scripture in the Bible. I need to get on this page. And it's legit. My heart is not proud. O oh Lord, my eyes are, are not haughty. I do not concern myself with the great matters or things too wonderful for me. 
but I have stilled and quieted my soul. The weaned child with its mother, like a, like a weaned child, my soul is within me. O oh, Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore. Now, since I'm done with that, we're gonna do the candle. And I'm legit with the candle. Amen to God. I thank you for everything what is happening for the world. We thank you for everything. Fingers crossed nothing bad will happen. Everybody, this will be an important time of your life. Bad times and good times will happen. Sometimes even medium times. It means it's bad and it's good. Together, medium life. So, those are the lives that happened to Jesus. Pretty much is more on the bad side. But for Mary and Joseph, his son is on the good side. Everybody, we thank him so much. Amen. And remember, God and Jesus are always with you. All the time. Hi, we hope everybody's doing okay. Um, we're trying to keep busy here at home. I'm creating a bunch of different activities for Anthony that some of his teachers have been doing down in Gramercy. And we're preparing online piano lessons and voice lessons and just praying that everybody's going to stay safe during this unfortunate time. <laughs> Yeah, and I have been spending a lot of time helping piano teachers around the world uh, during this time. They're always struggling with trying to learn how to teach online. And I have been teaching piano online for the past 10 years. And uh, so this is a great time to, to help the community. I just presented today a webinar and there were thousands of uh, music teachers uh, around the globe watching that. So we're preparing to get our students also, our studio here in Baton Rouge to be, to be having lessons online. And uh, I miss you all, and I hope to be back in church soon. And Anthony wants to say hello. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> God bless you all. Thank you.
I'm Jerry Moses, and hi everybody. This is a prayer of mine. Our Father, we remain apart from one another because of an unseen threat of illness and death. We ask you to comfort those afflicted by this new disease and to protect those who those persons caring for them. Grant us wisdom and, and patience to avoid this infection. And while we may be separated now from our church family, we remain united in our faith and in, in you and in Jesus' promise of eternal life. That will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, what's up? Hey, everybody. Reverend David asked us to make a little video about our sacred space together because we can't be in church right now. Many of you know I teach worship and wonder sometimes at church, and I sat down with my son Colin to talk to him and try to teach him some things. As happens often when you're dealing with children, they teach you something else. See, I wasn't really in the mood to do it. I've kind of been in a strange place lately. And Colin said, hey, Mom, I have a song I want you to listen to. And he couldn't remember it, and then he did. And this is called Resurre Resurrecting Live by Elevation Worship. And part of the words say, Resurrected King is resurrecting me. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. And it just hit me. You know, that's kind of what we're going through right now. We are kind of being quarantined at home. Um, a lot of us have our restrictions and movements and things like that altered. The life as we know it is kind of altered, but it is sort of a thing that we're giving up for Lent right now. I don't think it's coincidence that it's happening right now this time of year. So anyway, we wanted to say a little prayer and have our communion. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Sorry, I just love that song. It's a really good song. Okay. Would you like to lead us in prayer, son? Ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. As Jesus gathered with his disciples on that Passover night, he took the bread, and he blessed and he broke it, and he gave to them, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And around that same table, he took the cup of hope. And after giving thanks, he blessed it and said, Take this and drink it. It is the blood of the new covenant, shed for the forgiveness of sin. Each of you drink. We also have here the replica of the nail that actually went into Jesus. It is a replica of the nail that nailed our Christ to the cross. And we were talking about how heavy it feels and how it must have really does hurt. Feel, it actually does feel very heavy. Mm -hmm. Imagine you getting this all the way through your hand. Yeah, it must have hurt really bad. So the things that we're going through right now, we're going to survive these. The resurrected king is resurrecting me. And you. And everybody. And everybody. Have a good day. See you.
May the God who loves you keep you. May the God who keeps you keep you safe. May the God who keeps you safe keep you healthy. And may the God who keeps you safe and healthy keep you secure in the knowledge that you are in the presence of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.